and uh, my name is Shomar Farah from Michigan and uh, today I'm going to talk about smart multi-dimensional microgas chromatography we developed uh, in Michigan and first I'm going to talk about uh, gas chromatography and just in case somebody uh, doesn't know what it is and then we're going to move to micro GC and uh, basically the miniaturized version of micro uh, 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 gas chromatography then after that I'm going to move to so-called comprehensive 2D GC or 2D micro GC. Sometimes people call it GC by GC or micro GC by micro GC. And basically this is just the introduction part. Then I'm going to move to a uh, smart multi-channel multi-dimensional GC uh, which we develop in-house in Michigan. So first I'm going to talk about the concept of this smart multi-dimensional GC. Then after that I'm going to compare uh, the performance of the, uh, uh, this uh, multi-dimensional uh, GC with traditional uh, uh, comprehensive 2D GC or GC by GC. And then after that I'm going to show you some examples of smart 2D GC and then I'm going to move to so-called 3D GC. And then after that I'm going to discuss uh, the future work and finish my talk. Okay, so introduction part. We know uh, when we do detection, there's typically uh, there are two categories of detection. One is liquid-based detection. For example, if you want to detect analyte in blood or in water, that's a liquid-based detection. However, there's another 50% of chances of cases you are talking about uh, vapor-based detection. And vapor-based detection actually has very broad uh, applications. For example, we can do uh, breath analysis, and environmental protection and monitoring, and the battlefield for explosive detection or chemical warfare agent detection. And sometimes we even can uh, detect uh, VOCs emitted by plants and for early warning of crop health and maybe insect attacks or environmental changes. And uh, so there are a bunch of methods uh, doing the uh, working on the uh, vapor sensing detection. However, vapor sensing is very unique as compared to uh, uh, like antibody antigen detection. In a liquid-based detection, if you want to detect certain protein of DNA, we have a counterpart of DNA or um, protein to, to, to uh, render the so-called specificity. For example, if you want to detect certain anti antigen, we can immobilize antibody on surface. We, if you want to detect a certain uh, gene, we can uh, immobilize uh, another complementary DNA on the surface to grab or to capture that particular sequence. And for gas analysis, however, it's very difficult because there's no such so-called recognition molecule. And so, so therefore, if we really want to measure or detect methanol, ethanol, they are very close to each other. It's very difficult to differentiate them. So gas chromatography actually is probably one of the best methods uh, in the uh, vapor-based detection. So basically, uh, in the analytical chemistry, this is probably the standard and uh, using the uh, uh, two for for uh, gas detection. And basically this is how uh, gas chromatography or GC works. So basically this is a GC column. Usually it's probably just a circular shaped uh, uh, glass based column or square shaped uh, uh, microfabricated column. It's coated with a, a polymer. Uh, in GC terminology we call it stationary phase. And then when the gas molecules are uh, flowing inside of this uh, column, they, they get separated. So initially you have a pulse, and then after that, when they travel, uh, when they travel along the column, they get separated. The reason because they have a different interaction uh, with this uh, so-called stationary, stationary phase. So this is a, a sort of standard GC, and uh, we do, uh, and it's a pretty large. It's probably uh, over 50 pounds in weight. And uh, basically, this is the uh, the principle of the GC. And you have, for example, you have eight analytes and ejected in a pulse format, and then after they, they, they travel along the column, they get separated. So you get eight peaks coming out. So each peak represents one particular analyte. So the problem with a, a large GC, actually the advantage with a large GC is it has a very large peak capacity. So which means you can separate lots of analytes, probably hundreds of analytes. However, it takes extremely long time, usually you know hours maybe. And also it's very heavy and bulky and it needs dedicated personnel and usually it's in a centralized lab you cannot put it in the field it also consumes lots of power so for many field applications we need a so-called uh, micro GC or miniaturized GC 
And uh, the first uh, demonstration of uh, this sort of lab on chip uh, actually is not in the liquid based detection, actually it's in the vapor phase detection. The paper was published uh, back in 1979. And uh, so basically the idea is you have you microfabricated the GC column and then you do the injection and the, the gas molecules passes uh, this GC column and you get separation. So the advantage of this one is its portability, of course, and it has rapid analysis and consumes much less power and can be automated, it can be uh, deployed for field applications. The problem is we have so-called a co-elution problem because, uh, you know, for example, we still have eight analytes injected here and you can tell four, two, eight, four, five, six, they are not uh, separated and seven, eight, they are co-eluted. So the reason is because it's pretty much like a spectrometer we know you know, large spectrometer, we can resolve a blue, green, yellow, and for small spectrometer, we'll lose so-called spectral resolution because blue, yellow, they may just cloud it, and we cannot resolve them at all. And same thing with the uh, chromatography. And basically, if we have a low, if we shrink everything down to small size, we lose so-called chromatog chromatography resolution, and so therefore we lose peak capacity. So here, are just uh, a few examples of uh, so-called uh, many actions in GC. They are not micro. They are pr pretty much like this big. And uh, so, in order to increase uh, so called peak ca capacity, uh, so people are talking about uh, multi dimensional separation. So, first, let me just use uh, a 2D gel electrophoresis as an example. This is actually the uh, separation in the for, for biomolecules, like protein molecules. And uh, so basically, initially, you put the protein molecules here or DNA molecules, and basically, you, you run gel uh, analysis along this direction. So you got maybe a couple of bands, okay? Each band may contain several uh, different protein molecules. And then after that, you do a, a further separation. But in this case, you are not, these molecules are not separated by their charge, but by their mass, okay? So therefore, you can see you have many more bands coming out uh, as compared to this one. So usually, is a, in this case, we have a two independent separations based on two distinct properties, such as charge and mass. Okay, so because of 2D dimensional separation, we get much more peak, I mean, much higher peak, peak capacities as compared to this one. So okay, if you really talk about the peak capacity, typically we have this equation, it's N1 times N2, and whereas N1 is a peak capacity for the first separation along this direction, and N2 is a peak capacity for the second separation. So total actually is a multiplication. So you have N1 times N2. So you have a huge peak, peak, uh, peak capacity if you go with a multi-dimensional separation. Now, how can we translate the 2D gel electrophoresis idea, okay? This idea uh, to this vapor detection, okay? So this is a sort of a naive uh, thought, okay? So we first separate vapor along this direction. And for example, if we are able to get a few bands, no problem, that's good. Uh, okay, we realize in the inside each band, we may have a couple of co-eluded uh, analytes. Okay, then we put these bands into those columns, and then they, they further separate along those columns. They are nice, however, it's not doable, at least practically it's not feasible. The reason because gas molecules are very mobile. Okay, remember gel electrophores, you can fix the protein molecules spatially within the gel and then do further separation. This one actually is very difficult to fix gas molecules in space. So therefore we cannot do the so-called parallel second uh, dimensional separation. So the idea is we do everything in series. So we send this one first to a column and then send this one to, a second, uh, to, the, to the same column. Basically we connect these two columns in series instead of in a parallel way. And so, therefore, we need some sort of interface, okay, to grab this one to the second column and then grab this one to the second column. And so, this comes to the uh, <coughs> so called comprehensive uh, uh, GC idea, okay. It's called uh, 2D GC, comprehensive 2D GC. Sometimes people call it GC by GC or GC square. Okay, so this, this is how it works. And this cartoon shows the, uh, 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 the, uh, the Comprehensive 2D GC and this cartoon shows the same idea, but it, the, you know the column becomes so-called microfabricated uh, GC column. But the work, working principle is the same. So initially we have injector, so it injects a, 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 a mix, mixture of gas molecules 
then we send into this one into a first dimensional column, and then we have a modulator, and then we have a second dimensional column, and then we have a vapor detector here. And so this column is very long, usually probably a couple of meters long, or probably even longer than that for a traditional GC and for a micro GC maybe one or two meters long. And this one is usually very short. Okay, I'm going to tell you why it's very short. And this one's probably half a meter at most. And these two GC columns are coated with different uh, polymers. So first, like this one, the first one is coated with non-polar stationary phase. The second one is coated with a so-called polar stationary phase. So therefore, each analyte will be subject to two independent separation. First, by their vapor pressure in the non-polar column, and second, by followed by the, the uh, uh, further separation by by their polarity in the uh, polar column. So now, <coughs> this is the overall structure of the. Uh, 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 so the simple, simplified structure, so first dimensional uh, modulator and two dimensional. Remember, we, we need to put interface between the first column and second column. Typically people use modulator. It can be pneumatic modulator or can be thermal modulator. Usually uh, people use uh, thermal modulator. And the modulation period is about 1 to 10 seconds. So basically what it means is if you have a peak coming out of the first column, of course we don't know, it's not observable because Vapor detector is at the end of the second column. So basically, let's imagine you have a three analyzes coming out, and they they are co eluded one, two, three. And so modulator basically does what it does is uh, it cuts every ten seconds, for example, or every five seconds. So basically, it just slice it slices every ten seconds and send that send that particular slice to the second column for further separation. And then it it continues to grab a second slice, third slice, basically samples the entire uh, peak. Okay, and so and then send this each slice downstream for a second dimensional separation. Now the problem is because uh, this separation, this uh, modulation period is usually is probably five seconds or even sometimes even one second. So this secondary separation has to be finished within that modulation period. Uh, for example, if the modulation period is ten seconds, so this one has to be finished. In within 10 seconds. Otherwise, you have so-called uh, uh, wrap round issue because the second piece will be sent into the second column, and then you have still have the, the first the separation in the second column, and then the the, the, the second piece will may catch up with the, the, the first slice. So therefore, you have a wrap around wrap around issue. So it gets mixed. So therefore, this is a very uh, uh, Big requirement, so you have to finish everything within 10 seconds. So therefore, remember, I put a very small column here, so which means you have to finish everything within modulation period. And also after that, you re you know recombine everything, you get a so-called uh, 2D chromatography, okay, like this. Now the the advantages are supposed to improve the uh, peak capacity. So for example, GC by GC peak capacity is supposed to be larger than you know single column uh, GC. And however, it, uh, it, it, it creates a lot of uh, uh, drawbacks. For example, usually you cannot get uh, the, the real uh, N1 and G, uh, for the first column because you have a reduction because sampling issue. Okay, so every, every time you sample like every 10 seconds, so which means you don't know what's going on within this 10 seconds. And uh, so second, actually, uh, because we have that uh, limitation of in the modulation period, you cannot do very long second dimensional separation. Usually, probably only couple of seconds you have to finish and uh, so uh, typically the peak capacity uh, for the second for the 2 d dimensional uh, GC is is not as big I mean it's it's okay it's better than 1d but it's not as big as people anticipated okay usually probably a few times better and also it involves a lot of complicated 2d uh, chromatogram re reconstruction because you have only one detector at the end so you don't know what's going on for the first First dimensional. So basically, you have to figure out through the detection at the end of the second column. Okay, and also it's difficult to scale up. I'm going to show you next slide. Now, can we go 3D, I mean, GC by GC by GC? Yes. Theoretically, yes, we can. We have a first dimensional separation. And then we have uh, uh, this uh, modulator one, a second dimensional separation, modulator two, and third dimensional separation. Then we have a vapor detector here. Actually, there's probably two papers or three papers published so far on the uh, GC by GC by GC. And, but the, the problem is if you can look at the modulation period, first this one is five seconds because second dimension has to be finished within five seconds, okay? And then if, for this modulator, you, you have only like 0.2 seconds. 
And so which means uh, the second, third dimensional separation has to be completed within one, two seconds. If you want to hook a fourth dimensional separation, basically, you probably this one will be like 0 0.01 seconds, for example. It's, it's, it's really difficult to scale up. Okay, so the, the comments is yes, it's doable, but the benefit is diminishing. Basically, it's more or less the same as a 2D GC, comparison to 2D GC. It, I mean, it involves a very, very complicated hardware and 3D chromatography construction. Okay, and also more restringent requirement on the high dimensional separation. For example, very short separation time, as you can tell from here, five seconds for this one, and this one goes down to 0.2 seconds. Okay, basically, it's rarely explored. And all the only three papers I found so far. Now let's talk about uh, our design, so-called multi-dimensional separation GC, uh, multi-dimensional uh, GC. So let's uh, revisit uh, so-called 2D uh, geoelectric forces, and basically we do separation this way, and then we do separation this way. So in this uh, 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 two separations, actually they are completely independent. Okay, and uh, and uh, then the uh, first dimensional separation can be measured directly because this is what you see. Okay, and there's no modulator, no risk of construction. Basically, you just measure what you get. And so let's visit the interface between the two separations. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to put a detector here and a routing system here. Okay, up the first dimension separation. So basically, this guy sitting here basically works as a phone operator. Remember, a long time ago, they are like operator, give me like you know, like tell tell me the number, and then this operator routes um, the the uh, you know the phone number. Both, uh, the, the, the message to certain channel. Okay, basically there's a smart guy sitting over here and look at the bands coming out of from the first column and then set, uh, send them into one by one into different channels. You can, this one can be one channel or can be multiple channels. Okay, so this is uh, the detail, details of how we implement this uh, so-called multi uh, smart or multi-dimensional GC. So for example, we have eight analytes coming out and we'll, then we detect these eight analytes, or probably they are grouped into maybe four peaks. And then we send them into uh, first channel, second channel, third and fourth channel. But they are all secondary, second dimensional separation. Okay. And we have a detector here. And this detector we call non-destructive flow-through on column vapor sensor. Basically, they are not dis uh, destroy any analytes. Basically, they just watch the analytes passing by and then make a decision, send those analytes into different channels downstream. So let me just give you one example, uh, just a simple example to, for you to understand how this smart GC works. And basically this one's one to one by two channel 2D micro GC. Uh, and so one first dimensional and two channels for second dimensional separation. Again, we have uh, eight analytes. And unfortunately, after separation, we cannot fully separate all eight analytes. Eight analytes, we have only two groups coming out. So they have co-illusion here and co-illusion here. So once this detector sees the entire uh, peak coming out of the first column, this one sends this peak into the second dimensional column, upper channel, and then they get further separation. And then uh, for the second group, this one sends this one, sends this group to the bottom channel. Of course, this is uh, again secondary se separation, second dimensional separation, and for further separation. And so how, how can we implement this smart 2D and 3D GC? Basically, this, is show, this shows you the example of 1 by 3 channel 2D GC. And this one I can show you is a 1 by 2 by 4 channel 3D micro GC. Actually, a, when you want to scale up, it's very simple. It's basically just attach you know, one part to the, to the outcome, um, outlet of this, uh, the, the preceding uh, uh, separation. And so the advantage is actually there's no modulation on this low, low dimensional separation. There's no broadening issue. You can get entire analytes into the downstream um, uh, column. And so it, it has very long, it can get a very long uh, high dimensional separation. Okay. Uh, later I'm going to show you we can do the second or third dimensional separation up to probably a few hundred seconds instead of only five seconds. And no thermal modulator. It's easy, very easy to construct a uh, multi-dimensional chromatogram. Basically, we have a sensor of each channel, of each dimensional separation. Basically, just read the peaks coming out of um, uh, the, 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 the channel. It's pretty easy. So there's no real construction issue involved at all. And it's highly cascadable. Um, you, you can cascade it to 3D, 4D, even 5D if you want. And basically, it, the complexity basically goes up linearly. Okay, you just add more separation, uh, but it, it, you don't have 
to change anything. Okay. It also has a better detection limit because instead of cutting entire piece into small pieces or slices, we send entire peak into the second or third dimensional uh, columns. So, so therefore, the detection limit can be improved. So here I just want to compare, <coughs> okay, GC by GC, uh, three, I mean, <coughs> GC by GC by GC, these are traditional design, and with our one channel, one by K2 channel, smart 2D GC, and 3D GC. Okay, this is equation, you don't have to worry too much about it. The bottom line is smart 2D GC is at least six times better than the best GC by GC. Okay, and smart 3D GC is at least 36 times better than GC by GC by GC. And again, this one actually is theoretical is better than this one. So if you compare, if I want to go with 3D GC and compare 3D GC with the current existing 2D GC, actually we are probably at least 100 times better. Okay, now let me show you the example of how we implement this 2D GC. This is the simplest uh, implementation. So basically, you have 1D and then you have 2D here, but we put a detector here after the first dimensional separation, and then we put another one here for the second dimensional separation. And here, let me show you one example. This is detector number one. Okay, so you can see we have five analytes, but they group uh, into three uh, co eluded peaks, one here, two here, and two here. And then we send this peak into the uh, second dimensional separation, you can see they are well separated. They are crowded, but actually I'm pretty sure they are well separated. And then here you can see they are well separated. And now let's move to uh, so-called one by two channels. Basically, we add another channel here. And uh, you can see we have a bunch of co-eluded peaks coming out of the first channel. And then we send those co-eluded peaks this way, that way, and then alt alternately, you know, to, to this and to this, to this, and back to this. And you can see they are all well separated. Those, these are a 2D chromatogram you know, uh, for, for this separation. You can see we can go to probably 80 seconds for the second dimension separation. This can, cannot be done with a conventional uh, 2D GC because 2D GC usually the second separation has to be finished probably within 5 seconds or 10 seconds at most. And now if we do the temperature ramping, basically we can ramp the temperature. You can make things better, which uh, basically you shorten the uh, IC time. You can still see they, they can, you know, after the first column, they can be separated on the second column. And the second separation time, uh, you can go up to probably 200 seconds, 180 seconds in this case. And now let's go, we can move uh, to so-called micro GC. Basically, the, the, the idea is the same. We can implement it onto the traditional large GC format, or we can go, go with a micro GC. And this entire system is, is uh, micro, based on micro GC. This is micro column, and this is a sort of like a thermocouple and a heater. And uh, so this is a pre-concentrator. We have valves involved. And <clears throat> again, we do, we can do the so-called isothermal uh, separation at room temperature. You can see this one is from first column and this one from two channels of the, the second column. And so basically, you can see they are all well separated after the second column, a uh, second dimensional separation. And then we can do the temperature ramping, of course, and actually easier because uh, the micro channel becomes smaller so, or thermal mass. So uh, you can still see, you know, this is a trace from the first detector, first uh, separation, and this is trace from the, uh, the second column, channel A, and the second column, channel B. And you can see they are all well separated after two-dimensional separation. Now let's move to 3D GC. <coughs> and uh, so uh, till this point, nobody can really build a 3D GC. The, the 3D GC I talked talk about before I mentioned all these three papers, actually they're from two groups. They are basically not true 3D GC. Basically, it's a, I would say it's just a <coughs> maybe a little bit better than 2D, but not 3D. Here I'm going to show you the true 3D GC. <coughs> so basically the idea is the same. We have a first, sem first separation, first D separation, second dimensional separation, and third dimensional separation. So basically they can be cascadable very easily. So basically you attach this one to the preceding column, this one to this, and this one to this. And so here I just want to show you a very simple experiment and uh, where we are using one by one by one. So 3D GC, these are two 3D GC. The reason because there's no modulator here, okay? So you can separate each peak, you know, three times <coughs> independently. So here I just want to show you one simple ex um, example. Let's say we, we have four analytes here and 72 to 20, okay? So they co elute after the first separation. We know there's only one peak, but we know there's four peaks there. 
and then we subject this one to second dimensional separation. Okay, <clears throat> this one peak becomes two peaks because 17, 18 they coelude, 19 and 20 they coelude. Okay, but they are separated into two peaks. Now we subject this one to further separation, third dimensional separation. You can see they are well separated, and this one is well separated. Now, <clears throat> if you put everything together, and this is first dimensional separation, you have only five peaks, even though you have 22 analytes, and here you have probably nine peaks, you know, and then uh, this is second uh, dimensional separation. And then you subject this one to a third dimensional separation for each individual peaks here. Basically, you, you do first analysis for each individual peak. You can see they are all well separated, you know. Basically, if you, you know, really blow up, you can see this, they are well separated. So, <coughs> <coughs> this is a 3D uh, chromatogram. How can you do it? Basically, you count the first dimensional, second dimensional time, and third dimensional time. For example, for peak number nine, they are here. That's the first dimensional, second dimensional, and third dimensional. So basically, you don't have to reconstruct three dimensional chromatogram. Basically, you just read from the, each sensor after each column. So you can build a true 3D chromatogram. Okay? And then if you really want to go back to 2D, that's easy. You just project this one to whatever direction you want to, or whatever plane you want to project, so you can get 2D, okay? And so we know with 3D, you can get a very big, very huge uh, peak capacity, which allows us to probably do analysis of hundreds of analytes without going with a large uh, GC, okay? And with, this can be done in a uh, micro GC. Now, discussion. <clears throat> so what are the advantages? Huge peak capacity, okay, and huge, a very big peak capacity efficiency. So which means for given S time, this can generate much larger peak capacity than the uh, traditional comprehensive 2D GC or uh, 3D GC. Okay, it's highly scalable. Okay, and easy construction for chromatogram drawback. It involves more channels. Okay, so therefore, that's uh, that involves more hardware. But possible solutions, so if you microfabricate everything, so basically if you microfabricate one channel, it costs the same as you microfabricate in 10 channels. And also the lar longer an analysis time, yes, I agree, but the peak capacity per unit time is still very high. Okay, now, <clears throat> the future, this is what we are doing right now. We're going to do the module design. So each module actually contains thermal injector, micro column, and, and the vapor detector, okay, on the silicon wafer. Okay, this is a, just some of the preliminary results we do, so how we put the some injector and the coat, coating here and the detector right here. And then we can put a, a module here like this way. And if you don't like this construction or configuration, it's highly scalable, it's highly reconfigurable. You just pull out this module and put another module in. And it's very, very easy to switch to another configuration. But basically, this is a, 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 one of the <coughs> things we are working on at Michigan. And also, of course, we have to develop so-called smart algorithm to really for peak detection and also more efficiently separate uh, uh, peaks and for given uh, analysis time. And of course, we are working also working on applications. Um, okay, with that, I would like to thank my uh, students and postdocs and my collaborators and my funding agencies. Thank you for your attention.